the house catches the fire. Okay? And you need help, urgent help. Will you think that, oh, we don't know uh, Chinese language, they don't understand English, how can we communicate? Better stay in home. No, right? You will go out and somehow or other you will try to, uh, uh, you know, with your body language, you try to tell that you need help because your fire house is on fire. The reason why we are not going out and preaching, probably we are not sufficiently convinced that the world is in very hellish condition. And the only solution that we have is Krishna consciousness. Now, if we are sufficiently convinced of the process and the situation, we will not wait. We will not give some excuse to me ourselves and to others. Right? So uh, that's how Srila Prabhupada convinced them. And then they go out uh, and then they went to China and become a successful preacher. So that's how Srila Prabhupada's prayer is. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. We'll do the Mangala Charan quickly and then we'll go to the subject. Om Agyana Diviranda So Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshunan Mitangjana Tashmai Si Guruve Namaha Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Sri Madhevakti Vedanta Swami Dinamine Namaste Sarasate Deve Gauravani Pratyarine Nidvishesha Shunnavadi Pashyatta Deshutarine Vanchakal Padalu Bhasya Vipas Indu Vaivacha Padidanam Paponebo Vishnavipo Namo Namaha He Krishna Gona Shindu Dina Bandu Jagatpati Gopesho Gopika Kanto Radha Kanto Namastati Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Deshavanu Shute Devi Panamami Hari Priye Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adyaita Gadara Shiva Shadi Gauravakta Vindu Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Mukham Karati Bachalam Pangum Langhati Girim Tatvipaka Maham Bande Si Gurandina Tadine it says that uh, even a dumb person can uh, speak and the lame person can cross the mountain if he gets the blessings from spiritual master. So whatever I will speak now, uh, if something uh, is a mistake, please forgive me for my ignorance. And if something you would like, I will give the credit to my spiritual master because of him I am able to speak something in front of him. Okay, so, you know, uh, in the uh, any book distribution, there is um, uh, our book distribution, Acharya, uh, named his case Vaisheshika Prabhu from his Silicon Valley. He gave four laws, and we will not go in details, but just I want to touch. Uh, the first law is uh, our sadhana should be strong. The second law is we should get books in different language. Maybe Russian language, maybe Chinese language. Every language you should get books. Second, third is more you show, more you sell. And the fourth is we should organize. Now, I want to only touch base with the first one, which is our sadhana should be strong. So we can look at it into four different angles. Of course, all those are correlated. But just for the sake of discussion, let us discuss that four different aspects. <laughs> First aspect is uh, our chanting and reading or hearing should be strong. If we should do our 16 round very nicely, we should read and hear Srimad Bhagavatam every day. Why? Because it purifies our heart and it creates a impetus for us to go out and distribute. You cannot go to uh, others and say, oh, you know, uh, take Srimad Bhagavatam, read Srimad Bhagavatam, unless we ourselves practice it, right? We cannot preach what we don't practice. We must preach what we practice. Therefore, first uh, thing is that we must practice what we preach, right? And um, second aspect is that, you know, uh, our service attitude. Not that although the chanting and hearing and reading is the most important sir, devotional service, but not that we are qualified enough to uh, do these 24 hours chanting or reading. Right? So we must have some service attitude. Uh, Bhagavad Gita 
ಕೃಷ್ಣ Desham Shatoto Yuktanam, that person who is always in my service, always Yuktanam, always associated in the, my service, I will give them the Dadami Buddhi Yugantam. I will give them the intelligence so that they can come to, they can distribute, they can uh, you know, preach Krishna consciousness. So it is important that we should have a service at it. At the other day, Bhakti Vinod Thakur's Happy Alliance Day, we came and there was a very short, you know, small day. people i mean small number of devotees came so i i was uh, looking that monica mataji opened the gift shop she's doing a service of course i was like kind of not interested but because not many people came other than our own devotees but she is there hoping that somebody will come and she could serve to my surprise somebody came and she distributed a shrimad bhagavat right why if i i was just thinking that why is it like that why it was why it happened the answer is same no matter what we are trying to show our service attitude which actually helps please krishna to send someone so that you know shrimad bhagavatam can be distributed again with our material calculation all those things are effective of course we need to be organized we need to uh, think what is uh, good we cannot just go into a empty street and can start distributing shrimad bhagavatam thinking somebody will come of course we need to apply those kind of thought but most important is that we need to depend on krishna we need to be associated with the service attitude so i think a service attitude is very important the third thing is that we need to depend on uh, Krishna and Krishna's pure spirit. Chaitanya Chaitamito says that um, Krishna Shakti Vinatar Nahe Prabhupada means without Krishna and Krishna's devotee empowering us, it is not possible for us in condition soul to distribute Krishna consciousness because it's a Golokero Prendar, it's the highest uh, uh, jewel. We cannot, we don't have qualification to distribute Srimad Bhagavatam with our material qualification therefore we must pray the praying prayers have very powerful you look at shrimad bhagavatam throughout shrimad bhagavatam there are prayers there are gajendra moksha prayers there are prayers from shiva there are prayers from brahma everywhere there is a praying why because prayers opens our heart it makes us humble it makes us depend and helplessly dependent like a child depends on the mother so we depend on shri prabhupada's mercy the same experience i have in uh, Radha Ashtami. Yeah, in Radha Ashtami, I came to Shri Rupapad and Shri Rupapad, I said, Shri Rupapad, we are not able to meet your goal. We, Skon Calgary, is not able to meet our goal and you need to do something. We bow down to you. Just after that, we went to gift shop and you will not believe somebody, just after that, um, uh, Uber driver came and he just took Srimad Bhagavatam. Can you believe it? Somebody, Bengali person came. Bengali people generally are not interested. even if i am bengali but uh, he came and he said i i want to shrimad bhagavatam we didn't think, we didn't go to somebody we didn't uh, you know try to find him they just simply came and took shrimad bhagavatam so all those things actually makes us more strong in our devotion shrimad bhagavatam distribution is purifying which makes us humble it makes us tolerant it makes us dependent on krishna and krishna devotees mercy that's the beauty and then uh, finally i want to talk one more aspect faith and conviction so even if we are reading shrimad bhagavatam how much faith or conviction we have i have a personal experience uh, when i was in us i went to new york you know new york tomskin square park there is you know shri prabhu started sankirtan movement right there's a big tree and uh, government has put a level called hari krishna because shilopopad used to uh, do the chanting on uh, under the tree 
and all the people, all the hippies and all the newcomers actually they joined, right? So that place was empty. And then I uh, I went with my family, I put officiances, and then I was thinking I will stay some more time to meditate a little bit. But nearby there are some um, uh, some homeless people. Okay, and you know, they look a little crazy, and you know, so materially I am saying. Uh, and then they uh, look at me and then they say Hare Krishna, I said Hare Krishna, and then uh, they try to come to me and try to ask some benefit, you know, some favor or something. And naturally with their attitude and behavior, I was a little, you know, afraid. And then I, I decided to go away, go away from that place with my family. So then I was thinking in my mind after that, that when Srila went that time in 1965, Maybe there are so many homeless people, but he was fearless. He was fearless and he was uh, chanting Hare Krishna and we see that how Krishna reciprocated. So in my mind, how I was thinking, why he was fearless? Because he has a conviction. We did. Yes, Krishna will surely protect us. But how many of us, he has a, such a strong conviction that Krishna will definitely save me. We have heard so many times, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, how many of us have a, such a strong conviction like Shiva Prabhupada that he dared to sit in that place? No, equal, he could have been killed, he could have been thrown some, you know, some anything, and he could have been hurt, but he didn't. We are, he was not afraid. My Guru Maharaj always said that, you know, why are you so afraid? Read Shiva Prabhupada's book every day. If Shiva Prabhupada would have been afraid, could he have established what he have done? Anyway, so my realization is that, yes, the faith and conviction should be strong. But how can you increase that conviction? Just like that, we cannot increase, right? We, we can't say, oh, uh, from today, I will have a lot of faith. With faith, I will leave. It's mechanical, how it will happen. It's just like chanting. It, initially, we don't have a taste. But we follow by, because Shila Prabhupada told us to uh, do 16 rounds, we try to do 16 rounds or whatever rounds we could do nicely. Slowly, slowly the taste comes. Slowly, slowly the heart gets cleaned. Similarly, more and more we will read Srimad Bhagavatam every day, mandatorily. We will see one day we start getting taste of reading and hearing. We will see that there will be conviction. Everybody here, I can tell definitely one year before, the, the taste that you have, today the taste increased. That's why you are all here. Why? Because more you hear, more you read. These are not the words, material words. It might be, you might see that it's a book. Materially, it looks book. But it's not a book. It's Krishna himself. The, every word is a spiritual word, Shri Prabhupada says. Therefore, uh, we must have this strong conviction and we will keep on reading. And one day we will see we have a, such a strong conviction. And then when we grow this conviction, we go out and share this knowledge, right? So, Srimad Bhagavatam verses, of course, Srimad Bhagavatam has a lot of verses which are all glorious, but just for sake of that, we will have the verse, and then uh, we will go to the translation and we'll discuss a little bit about glories of Srimad Bhagavatam. As I said that, once we are convinced with the glories, we will read it, cultivate the knowledge, and we share that. Okay? So, we'll say, we'll start. Idam Bhagavatam Namo Uranat Brahma Shamitam Uttama Sloka Charitam Chakara Vraja Bhagavan Rishi Kannam Shaskayanam Maha Anybody? Please try. Idam Bhagavatam Namo Uttama Sloka Charitam Chakaro Bhagavan Rishi Nishriyo Shayo Lokasya Dhanam Shastayanam Maha Matajis, anybody? Right, right. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my bad. Sorry. Idam Bhagavatam Namo Uranam Brahma Shamitam Uttama Sloka Charitam 
चकड़ भगवान ऋषि इंकारनेशन ऑफ लॉर्ड श्री कृष्ण Uttama sloka of the personality of Godhead, Charitam activities, Chakra compiled, Chakra sorry, Chakra compiled, Bhagavan incarnation of the personality of Godhead, Rishi Sri Basdev, Nisreyo uh, Shayo for the ultimate good, Loka Shya of all the people, Dhanyam fully successful and and uh, Shastayanam all blissful, Mahat all perfect. We'll go to translation. I hope everybody can see. Okay, translation by His Divine Grace, Shri Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada Ki Cha. This Shri Mad Bhagavatam is the literary incarnation of God, and it is compiled by Shri Prabhupada, the incarnation of God. It is meant for the ultimate good of all people, and it is all successful, all blissful, and all perfect. Prepared by His Divine Grace, Shri Prabhupada. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu declared that Sri Mad Bhagavatam is the spotless, sound representation of all Vedic knowledge and history. There are selected histories of great devotees who are in direct contact with the personality of Godhead. Sri Mad Bhagavatam is the literary incarnation of Lord Sri Krishna, and therefore non-different from him. Sri Mad Bhagavatam should be worshipped as respectfully as we worship the Lord. Thereby, we can derive the ultimate blessings of the Lord through its careful and patient study. As God is all light, all bliss, and all perfection, so also is Sri Mad Bhagavatam. We can have all the transcendental light of the Sri Mad, uh, Supreme Bhagavan, Sri Krishna, from the recitation of Sri Mad Bhagavatam, provided it is received through the medium of the transparent spiritual master. Lord Chaitanya's private secretary, Sri Lord Damodar Goswami, advised all intending visitors who came to see Lord at Puri to make a study of Bhagavatam from the Parsan Bhagavatam. Parsan Bhagavatam is the self-realized bona fide spiritual master, and through him only one can understand the lesson of Bhagavatam. In order to receive the desired result, one can uh, from the one can derive from the study of the Bhagavatam all benefits. That are possible to be derived from the personal presence of the Lord. It carries with it all the transcendental blessings of Lord Sri Krishna, and we can expect from that we can expect from His personal contact. Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. So, Shri Prabhupada in his part part mentioned two important things. One is Shri Mad Bhagavatam and Krishna is non-different, and we'll further discuss on that fact. And then another important thing is that even if Simad Bhagavatam has all the knowledge, we must hear from the bona fide, bona fide teacher. And you know, bona fide teacher means the uh, it is in the disciplic higher succession number one, and he practice what he preaches. It's very important. Acharya means acharan. The that. That person who does a acharan, he should practice what he preach, and third is that he should have the complete uh, thorough knowledge of the scripture. And why is it so? Because if we hear from somebody who is materially motivated, then it's like a serpent touching the milk. Milk is pure, but if a serpent uh, touches a little bit into the milk, the complete milk becomes impure. We cannot take it. Similarly, Srimad Bhagavatam, although it is pure. If it is uh, spoken by some motivated person, uh, materially motivated person, it does not uh, give us the the self realization, or it does not give us the blessings of Sri Krishna. So we will see further with uh, some example how rare it is to get us real teacher from Sri Mad Bhagavat. So we must be thankful to His Grace Amrita Prabhu that he is taking the class and giving us that nectar every week. Thank you, Prabhuji. We will see later on with some example of Srinivas Acharya that how rare it is to get Srimad Bhagavatam and a teacher of Srimad Bhagavatam.
we'll go to that example but le let's first uh, discuss the translation the Srimad bhagavatam is literally incarnation of god so krishna and Srimad bhagavatam is non different actually in padma puran uh, there is a verse which says that um, the first two canto of Srimad Bhagavatam is the lotus feet of Lord. Then the third and fourth is thigh, fifth is navel, six is chest, seven and eight is two hands of Krishna, nine is throat or neck, and then ten is the face, eleven is the forehead, and twelve is the head. So many people might have asked many times to you, why do I need to have purchased so many books? Okay, can't we just break it? Uh, not break it can't we just take one or two maybe i will be uh, i will take only one, this one or that one we must uh, tell them that srimad bhagavatam and krishna is non different it represents the whole body we cannot cut krishna's head or hand or leg and give it to others right so similarly we cannot break srimad bhagavatam and also srimad bhagavatam is a sequence of uh, past times from starting from satya yuga to kali yuga therefore you should not bring otherwise it will it will be broken that flow will be broken Okay, and then uh, it says that, and it is compiled by Srila Vasudev. We know all that who is Srila Vasudev. He is the Acharya who has given us all the Vedic knowledge. Vedas, Obey. Actually, uh, Veda has two streams. One stream is called the philosophy stream, that is called Upanishad. And that summary is called Gita Upanishad or Bhagavad. Another stream is called Puran or history. Uh, um, uh, our pastimes and the summary of that is Srimad Bhagavatam and the essence of Srimad Bhagavatam is Brahma Shangri. So uh, uh, Srimad Bhagavatam contains the philosophy as well as the summary of all the Puranic story. But one difference is that a lot of other Purans might have the description or pastime from a lot of demigods uh, Srimad Bhagavatam only focuses on Krishna, Krishna's incarnation, and Krishna's devotees. Past time. That's why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there is no spot. Everything that is spoken is only Krishna and Krishna's devotee. Now, how it came, little bit we can uh, just uh, discuss, although we know, uh, you know. So, uh, in Canto 1, Chapter 5, when you will go, you will see. That after uh, uh, writing all the Veda, Upanishad, Puran, Mahabharata, Vasudev was not happy. He was not feeling the enlightenment in, our, in his heart. So he was thinking, and uh, why is it so? So then Narad Muni, a spiritual master, came and he asked that, why you are sad? Then uh, Vasudev said, I have written all, I have given everything to the human uh, beings, but I'm not feeling that satisfaction. Why is it so? Then Narad Muni said that, because you have not sufficiently glorified Krishna. You have given so many things that people in Kolyuga will be perplexed or, or you know, bewildered. What to do, what not to do. But you must summarize all the Vedas and put it into a uh, summary. Then he wrote uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. Later on, uh, his son, Subhadev Goswami, when he came, he didn't want, he was, initially he was a Mayabadi. He was not impersonalist, basically. He, uh, uh, but he didn't want to stay with, and he's completely detached. He didn't want to stay with Basdev. So he ran away. Then uh, Basdev sent his disciples, and then they chanted two verses. One verse describes how Krishna is so merciful that even if Putna, who wanted to kill Krishna, he gave the highest abort, that is Gola Vrindavan. Because he took his, him, uh, took her as his uh, mother, because he uh, she gave the uh, breastfeed. Now, uh, another verse is talks about Krishna's beauty, how Krishna is so beautiful in his uh, threefolded form. By hearing these two verse, uh, Shukdev Goswami's uh, heart get transformed. And then he uh, studies uh, Srimad Bhagavatam from Vaisdev. Later on, we see that King Parikshit actually was cursed when he uh, was hunting and he uh, put the snake with uh, one sage and then his son, uh, Sringi, actually uh, cursed him that he will die in seven days. Now, you see, at that point, Bhagavatam explained that uh, Prajshit Maharaj could have retaliated. He has the power to retaliate. But he actually did not do that. He uh, accepted that as a will of Krishna and he uh, tried to do what is best to do now. Now, uh, in our life also, you will see there are many occasion comes where we need to take a decision, either this way, that way. Uh, or 
this place, that place, this job, that job. Okay, so many decisions. But what is should be our guiding factor? Acharya Shri Prabhupada says, Acharya says that our guiding factor is that in any decision we make in our life, of course, crucial decision, not like whether I will eat uh, chow mein or rice today, not like that. But uh, you know, some crucial decision we should uh, take it. What is favorable for our devotional service? Because that is the ultimate goal of life. For example, I got a good job, but uh, in somewhere in Canada, but that's so far away from the ISKCON that I will hardly have an association. Well, I can take it. That is very good for my uh, career growth. But we need to also think that uh, the, what is our ultimate goal. So Acharya says that all our decisions should be based on what is favorable for our devotional service. That's what Parishit Maharaj uh, did. And then we know that Shubhadev Goswami talked about seven days, about all the Srimad Bhagavatam and all. And then there was a sage called uh, Shuta Goswami. Later on in Naim Sharanna, Shuta Goswami actually delivered the knowledge again, the Srimad Bhagavatam. That's how Srimad Bhagavatam was compiled by Vaisdev and it was narrated twice by uh, Shubhadev Goswami and Shuta Goswami. Okay, that's the history. It is meant for the ultimate good of all the people. So I will go to a verse. Uh, hopefully, I will be. But you will just read that verse. That verse itself is sufficient to explain this. I will not go to the Sanskrit verse. We don't have time. For a person who is suffering in the fire of countless miseries, and who desire to cross the insurmountable ocean of material existence. There is no suitable boat except that of cultivating devotion to the transcendental taste for the narration of Supreme Personality of God is first. So you can see that how important it is to hear Supreme Personality of God is first. That's how, how important is Srimad Mahalwadu. And then it says, uh, ultimate good for all people and it is all successful. It is all successful. Uh, why it is say it is all successful, all blissful? All blissful is if you go to um, Bhagavatam uh, third, uh, first and to first chapter, third verse, Nigamakalpatar Galitam Phalam Shukh Mukhadam Ritam Dragosham Yitam Pibata Bhagavatam Rashomalayam Muhuru Rashika Bhubibhavuka. It says that Veda is like a desire tree. You can get everything. You want to uh, enjoy materially, you get, you get to know what are the uh, sacrifice, sacrifice, austerity. You want to love Krishna, you can uh, do that. So Veda gives us everything. But enough tree. Just like in a tree, what is the base part of tree? For example, if, why we go to mango tree? For the mango. Why we go to apple tree? For the apple. So the base part of a tree is the fruit. So the fruit of the desired tree or Veda is Srimad Bhagavatam. And when that fruit is very sweet, it becomes more tasty. And how do we know that the fruit is very sweet? When a parrot actually tastes the fruit. Because it is known that parrot will never taste a fruit which is not sweet. Similarly, when Shugadev Goswami, the most liberated soul and exalted devotee, recite Srimad Bhagavatam, so when it comes from the, his lips, it becomes more nectarian. It all becomes all blissful. And then uh, we can discuss that. Why is it all successful? Uh, okay. Uh, there's a verse. Um, is, I think. 1.2.17 Srinatam Sha Katam Krishna Punna Sravana Ketana Hidayantarasta Bhadrani Vidunuti Shudit Shatam. So when we hear Krishna's message, what happens? All our heart gets purified. Right? Next verse is Nashta Prayashu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavatam Sevaya Bhagavati Yuttam Asloke Bhakti Bhagavati Nishtaki. Once we read Nityam Bhagavatam Seva, every day if we read, all the impurities in our heart and family is eradicated. So that is why we see all successful. Even Srimad Bhagavatam, we, if we read Srimad Bhagavatam, we learn so many things, right? For example, Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj was so dedicated. You know, his, we learn how much uh, his dedication, his faith, his surrender. 
when Hiranagashipu was killed by Narsingo Dev, Narsingo Dev wanted to give a boon to uh, Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj said, I don't want. Narsingo Dev said, no, 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 you must award. Then you know, you know what Prahlad Maharaj said? Prahlad Maharaj says, if you really want to give a boon to me, just excuse my father. Now think of that. That Hiranagashipu who has tortured and tried to kill uh, uh, Prahlad Maharaj, Prahlad Maharaj wanted to, uh, his father to be liberated. What lesson we get learned? A son should not judge the position of his father. Right? Look at Ramachandra. Perfect father, perfect son. Just because to keep his uh, word of his father's, he went to the forest. The perfect king. So, so many things. Look at Dhruva Maharaj. Dhruva Maharaj's determination. At this childhood, Nagmuni said, oh, you, you cannot do this austerity. Go back. No. I want it. Of course, initially he was materially motivated, but the look at the austerity determination that he had. So, so many lessons we uh, get from Srimad Bhagavatam. It will be helpful in our life. That's why uh, it is encouraged that even the child, should, children, we should encourage them to read Srimad Bhagavatam. Right? Gajendra Vaksha story. When you are adverse condition, when uh, the, uh, the, how we should pray, helplessly pray to Lord. Okay, so so many things, right? Uh, futility of material lust, Puruva and uh, Pururava and the Uruvashi story. So there are Ajamila stories. What is the uh, strength of uh, holy name? So we see so many stories, and this we should uh, encourage our kids to read. So Srimad Bhagavatam uh, not only will help us to handle, but it will create, it will develop the personality. It will develop the culture. It will develop the kids to um, become our, uh, you know, successful in their life. Right, so that is why we, I strongly request, and I know you guys are doing, but I'm just uh, doing my part. That please encourage your kids. So in the initial stage, you may take. I have seen devotees; they keep the Srimad Bhagavatam besides their bed. They read Srimad Bhagavatam and they open the picture. They show the picture to their kids and narrate. I just read the translation and uh, from the different part of Srimad Bhagavatam. Once these kids grow up, then they read the translation and then. Uh, more they grow up, they can go to the parvati. Just, you know, there are two choices. Either Hari or Hari. Hari, right? So it is your choice whether you want to give Hari or Hari. Okay? <laughs> and the way you decide the future consequence, we should also be able to. I have seen many, uh, I, I was uh, staying in the US and uh, my neighbors uh, telling me, that I could not, uh, he was from Mumbai, he was a very religious person, but he, he was uh, lamenting that I could not uh, take care of my children. The children has become now so am Americanized that they even don't want to listen to our culture. Because it was too late. It was too late, which is said, right? When the soil is soft, you must plow. When it is hard, it is, it is really deep. Of course, you guys are doing it, I'm just saying, you know? Okay, so uh, yeah, then, um, all perfect. I don't, time is going short. So all perfect. I don't want to go details, but there is a verse, very important verse, which is Srimad Bhagavatam, first and first chapter, second verse. If we don't tell that, that our discussion will be incomplete in terms of glories. He says, Dharma Bhachita Kaita Bahatra Parama Nirmat Sharanam Shatam Hiddam Vastava Mantra Vastra Shivadam Tapatraya Unminanam. So basically, Dharma Pachita Kaita Bhatra, this Kaita Dharma or this um, Chala Dharma or materially motivated Dharma, Srimad Bhagavatam just rejects. And Srimad Bhagavatam is purely established in the absolute truth. Therefore, it is called spotless Puran because it has no spot. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says because it only talks Krishna, Krishna's devotee, and Krishna's incarnation. It doesn't talk about other yagna, you know, austerity. Of course, they have some material motivation, but Vedas talk, but Srimad Bhagavatam doesn't talk. So it actually eradicates all the, the things and it established the definition of Dharma. What is the definition of Dharma? The highest Dharma, whether we are Hindu, we are Muslim, we are Christian, it doesn't matter. Those are external. The highest Dharma is of a living entities is to serve Krishna, uh, which is unmotivated, uninterrupted. And what when we perform this, our heart will be pure. So you may say you may worship Krishna, or you may say worship Allah, it doesn't matter. In fact, you will see that when um, 
Srimad Bhagavad Gita was translated into um, Arabian language, right? Uh, Arabian language. Uh, Srila Prabhupada was asked by uh, his disciple uh, who was translating, how do we translate Bhagavan Uvach? There are so many words, right? Bhagavan Uvach, Bhagavan Uvach. How do we translate Bhagavan? There is no suitable term in Bhagavan in the Arabian language. Prabhupada, without hesitation, said he should be Allah. See how Prabhupada's vision is. Okay? He doesn't discriminate things based on the, this external material. So, Srimad Bhagavatam takes you away of this. You know, it's, it's like, you know, you know it, we, we say, right, there are so many material problems. Can we solve these material problems with material solution? No, because all material problem and material solution are in the same material platform. If somebody is drowning in the ocean, and if somebody, even if somebody knows swimming, can he be in the ocean and help him? No. Maybe sometime he can help him, but ultimately he cannot. We need somebody coming from helicopter and give the rope to take him out. Similarly, we need a higher transcendental knowledge and the knowledge in order to pick up from the material condition. That's why Prabhupada wrote material problem and spiritual solution. Material problem can be solved only by the spiritual solution. Right? So this is Srimad Bhagavatam glory. Now, we will see why should we... Okay, we understand Srimad Bhagavatam is glorious. Very nice. But why should we go and distribute? Why do we need to really share? Can't we just cultivate and keep it with us? And of course, with our children. Well, we can. That is also glorious. But uh, Prabhupada explained, uh, let's say that I'm a doctor and I, I see a patient suffering in some disease and I know the root cause of the disease and I also know the medicine, but I'm just keeping silent. What happens? We can? Yes, we can. But by the nature of the doctor, he will go and prescribe the medicine. Why? Because he knows the medicine. So if we are factually convinced that Srimad Bhagavatam gives all the solution of our material problems, then why shouldn't we share? Vaishnavas are like Paradukhe Dukhi. The main feature of Vaishnavas are compassion. There is a famous uh, the devotee of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu whose name is Vasudev Datta. Vasudev Datta says, Oh my dear master, even if, I mean, oh my dear master, even if I have to live ever in the hellish uh, hell, but still I request, please transfer all the sin of the, uh, of the people of this world on, on me and take all of them back to God. He was ready to suffer just to save the, all the living entities. And hearing that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's heart got mended and he started crying. So this is called compassion. Okay? And only way to show compassion, many people you will see, if they do the food distribution, they do the you know, education, a you know, lot of things they do, right? Uh, helping the others. This is called material compassion. Of course, it is good. But then we need to understand, does it really solve the root cause of the problem? No. The root cause of the problem is, is away from Krishna. Srila Prabhupada gave a nice example. He said that, uh, let's say, um, uh, a very, uh, let's say, uh, you know, a very rich millionaire person, he went to a, a crowded place with his small daughter and the daughter got lost. Now the daughter is hungry after some time. And then she started crying and she doesn't know how to go back. Naturally, she's very young. And, um, and then a person look at her, oh, she's a, such a nice, beautiful girl. Okay, she's hungry. Okay, give me some biscuit. Okay. And then somebody came and gave, him, uh, gave her some water. That is also nice. But then another person came then and say, oh, I know that girl. She belongs to that millionaire person. How can the, she be lost? Took her hand and go back to, I mean, just hand over to, the, to her father. So. What is more important? What is more beneficial for to the daughter? Giving the biscuit or the water, which temporarily solves the problem for that time period, or connect to back to the real father. So we should understand that we cannot, by our material solution or so much uh, you know, brain you put in UN, can't even stop Russia to fight, can't even stop China to fight. What solution we are offering? With our all so called intelligence, so called big, big education, all the solution that we are providing is failing and failing. We must turn it to the Supreme Person, turn to the knowledge given by Srimad. 
That's why it is very important to go out and distribute. Share this knowledge. If you have something and if you have compassion, you would like to go out and share. That's why it is very important we read, we cultivate, and we share this. Now, we will see Srila Prabhupada's mood, but before we read Srila Prabhupada's mood on the Srimad Bhagavatam or book distribution in general, uh, I just want to say that this is not Srila Prabhupada has bought this culture. It was already there in our Gauriya Sampradaya. So, you know, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used to go to uh, Gadadar Pandit, meet Gadadar Pandit every day in Jagannath Puri, and they used to uh, read Srimad Bhagavatam every day and cry and cry. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu read Srimad Bhagavatam together 108 times. Again and again read Prahlad Mara story, Dhruva Mara story, again and again he used to read and used to cry. After Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there are two types of expansion. One expansion is Shara Goswami, the sixth Goswami, who actually um, uh, restored the Vrindavan glories and uh, established the deity worship and most importantly wrote all the, our scriptures. All Prabhupada's translation and all is based on that, uh, those scriptures that Shara Goswami gave. And then there is another expansion who, who came after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left this world. The three uh, book distribution acharya or sankirtan acharya. One is Srinivas acharya, second is Narottam Das Thakur, and third is Samananda. These three, with the order of Jiva Goswami, distributed books everywhere. And that time, our book does not have this printing. You know, you need to literally write uh, in the palm leaves. So Srinivas Acharya's story goes like that. Srinivas Acharya's uh, father name is Chaitanya Das and he and his wife went to meet uh, Mahaprabhu and Mahaprabhu ordered that, uh, not ordered, sorry, my bad, blessed that you will have a, a very intimate associate, as a, a, my intimate associate as your son. Then later on Srinivas Acharya came uh, to Bar. Srinivas Acharya, when he grown up, he wanted to learn Srimad Bhagavad. So he went to uh, all the way to Puri to learn Srimad Bhagavatam from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by that time disappeared. So he was crying, Oh, I came to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He is no more. Who will teach us Srimad Bhagavatam? Then Srimad, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came in the dream to his heart and he said, Oh, Srinivas, don't cry. Go to uh, uh, Gadadhar Pandit. He will teach. So he went to Gadadhar Pandit. Gadadhar Pandit says, Yes. I will teach you, but unfortunately, because of the separation of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, what happens? I am crying so much that this letter got faded. It's so drenched that we cannot even read it. If you bring us Srimad Bhagavatam, I can teach you. Then he uh, wrote his uh, instructing spiritual master, Naravari Sharkar. And then somehow Naravari Sharkar uh, gathered a book. So he went and he collected the book. When he came back, he saw. Gada that Pandit was no more in this world. Then he was again lamenting, oh, how can I now do that? Uh, you know. Then Gada that Pandit came in his dream, go to Vrindavan and learn it from Rupa and Shanatan Rishi. So he went from Puri to Vrindavan on walking, not like our flight or train, <laughs> uh, you know, walking. And then when he reached, he heard Rupa Goswami and Shanatan Goswami already left the world. So he's again lamenting, oh, there is nobody can teach me. How can I learn them? Then Rupan Shanadan came in his heart in the dream and said, You go to Jiva Goshan and Gopal Bhatta Goshami. So he go away to Gopal Bhatta Goshami. Later on, he was initiated. And then Jiva Goshami, looking at his desire, he uh, taught uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. So you see, just for one Srimad Bhagavatam book and one bona fide teacher. No, he has to go all the way to all over just to fight. So how fortunate we are that by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada, the books are just in front of us, in all the language. Right? And how rare it is to get a real bona fide teacher. Therefore, again and again, I go down to his guest, Swamit Prabhu, that he's nicely teaching and making us aware and understand the Srimad Bhagavad. Thank you. Thank you. So, we must, we must understand, we must appreciate it. Then Jiva Goswami actually uh, said that uh, uh, these three tired actually uh, write the scriptures and go. And then they used to write on the palm leaves and you know how difficult it is to write palm leaves, okay? So 
you know, nobody probably is experienced to write, but we can imagine, right? Writing in the paper. Nowadays, people don't even want to write. My kid doesn't want to write. He's just, you know, you know, that kind of stage. But that time, Pamti, you know, you have to literally write every, every mass, 18,000 mass, small mass. But they did it. And they did put it into bullet cart and they went for the distribution, book distribution. One day they were very tired and they were taking rest. Uh, they wake up and saw that all the books are gone from the bullet. Who took it? Who took it? Then um, he go, uh, then Srinivas Acharya came to a king's assembly. Uh, then searching the books and all, he came to a king's assembly. And um, it's a small thing, local, thing, not like a very big thing. So small thing. I forgot the name, not able to remember. I think read uh, something, uh, you know. Uh, you know. Anyway, so that king was discussing Srimad Bhagavat. Then uh, but Srinivas Acharya rose his hand. No, your, uh, your uh, understanding is wrong. Your, this understanding of the verse should be like this. Now he started narrating. Of course, he is taught by Jiva Goswami, right? So naturally, his uh, level of understanding is much more rich. And then looking at that, everybody fall on his feet. And then everybody accepted him as their spiritual master. Then he asks that, uh, the, where is this bullet card? Uh, who I, I want to find it out, where is the books? Then the king said, actually, this is one of my bad habit. In the night, I steal all the jewels uh, from the uh, passenger who are passing by the nearest road. And I have an astrologer who says that which road the passenger, which who is traveling, uh, who has the most jewel, uh, extreme, uh, an extraordinary jewel. This night, my astrologer says, go to this road and this uh, bullet card you do. So I did it, and, but I found all those books. Then they realized what is the strength of that uh, book, right? So, and then they surrender and then they uh, take um, Srinivas Acharya as their spiritual master. And, spirit, uh, and uh, Srinivas Acharya ordered everybody to write the books, to copy the books basically and distribute. So that is how that uh, book distribution goes into the highest. Peak. But after that, after they disappeared, again, darkness came. Then another two personality came. One is Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur and Baladev Bhutta. You see Sansara Dabana, all those things are written by Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur. And he, he gave the uh, detailed commentary of uh, Srimad Bhagavata, Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur. And Baladev Bhusha, Vidya Bhushan has actually uh, given the natural commentary of uh, Vedanta Sutra in, the, in, the, in, the, in our Bengali. So uh, anyway, after they gone, then again the darkness came. A lot of Apu Sampradaya came. I don't want to go over what is Apu Sampradaya. It's basically forgetting the real uh, the teaching of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and then they deviated. Then the personality came. Oh, Krishna sent the personality called Bhakti Vinotak. We just uh, celebrated Bhakti Vinotak. He re-established Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teaching again. And he actually uh, cut out all, he fought with all the people, he argued and he put the uh, proof and he re-established that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's real teaching. And then he's, um, he's called Seven Goswami. And then after him, he saw Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, who was known as Lion Guru and spiritual master of art, uh, Srila Prabhupada. Uh, he actually wrote, he was very much fond of writing books, distributing books. He actually uh, increased this culture. And after that, when Prabhupada, uh, uh, he made Prabhupada, he ordered Prabhupada to preach in uh, America, I mean, Western society. And he said that whenever you have some money, print books. That's why Srila Prabhupada took this order in his heart. It is said that the degree at which we have a faith and conviction to the word of Krishna and to our spiritual master, at that degree, we are going to progress in spiritual. So it all depends on our degree of our faith. So he took it as a life mission. He translated. If you read uh, Prabhupada Lilamrita, you will see. Uh, of course, I have not read Sorry, but I'm just uh, <laughs> requesting everybody should read, especially make your kids to read. It's story form. Each and every part, you will see what is the mood and vision of Prabhupada. Prabhupada used to sleep only two hours. My Guru Maharaj actually become uh, his assistant, part-time assistant, and his devotee, Mr. Tamal Krishna Goswami Maharaj, they were assistant. So he, he wrote uh, that, that Prabhupada used to sleep two hours. He had whole night. He used to write, uh, you know, write Srimad Bhagavatam. 
and at the last time also you must have seen the videos where he was lying he was still translating Srimad Bhagavatam because it is so important so and when Srila Prabhupada established ISKCON we are all ISKCONites right we come to ISKCON but we must know what is the purpose of ISKCON ISKCON is not just a Hindu temple ISKCON of course our Lord is Krishna we must worship but First, out of seven purposes, the first purpose of Prabhupada's God to systematically propagate the spiritual knowledge. You, know, you can read it uh, if you want to later, you know, that seven purpose we have uh, you know, put it into the world. So the first purpose, he says, to systematically propagate the spiritual knowledge throughout the world in order to bring, uh, in order to check the unbalance and bring the priests and the uh, harmony in this world. So that is our main vision. So book distribution in general is very important and very dear to Srila Prabhupada. Every center Srila Prabhupada used to go, first question he was asking, how is uh, the book distribution going? Therefore, but as I said, we, until unless we do, are not convinced, until unless we do not practice of reading Srimad Bhagavatam or any books in that matter, Srila Prabhupada's book, we will not be uh, sufficiently convinced or charged up to distribute that. So first, first is that we must read Nityam Bhagavatam Sita. We must serve the Vaishnavas, that is uh, uh, Bhagavatam, that is, uh, you know, Parsan Bhagavatam and Book Bhagavatam, and uh, we, we should uh, read every day uh, Srila Prabhupada's book or Srimad Bhagavatam, mainly Srila Bhagavatam, so that, you know, we read this, we cultivate this knowledge, and we share this. That is uh, what Srila Prabhupada wanted. And um, so, can we run a video? Mm. No? no? Yeah. The sound will come? Yes. Okay. So, I don't want to say too much of thing. I think I could uh, say whatever I uh, wanted to say. In, uh, I just want to run a, a kind of small video of Srila Prabhupada just to tell what is the mood of Srila Prabhupada. Okay. We can hear that rather than <laughs> listening from my mouth. Okay. So I will paste the link. If sound doesn't come, so you can What's put sound? your mic. Oh, I can put it there. What follows is a narration of excerpts from Shri Prabhupada's books, letters, and conversations on the subject matter of book distribution. One half of this recording will be narrated by His Grace Amalabhakratulu and the other half by your humble servant, Chandrasekhar Acharya Das. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, to his books, and to his Iskar. Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Canto, Chapter 2, Verse 38, Purport. The word Kriyasu, meaning by manual labor or by work, is important in this verse. One should engage in practical service to the Lord, in our Krishna consciousness movement, all our activities are concentrated upon distributing Krishna literature. This is very important. One may approach any person and induce him to read Krishna literature so that in the future, he also may become a devotee. Such activities are recommended in this verse. Kriyasu yas vindayo. Such activities will always remind the devotees of the Lord's lotus feet. By fully concentrating on distributing books for Krishna, one is fully absorbed in Krishna. This is Samadhi. 1972, letter to Kshiro Dakshayi. With full faith in Krishna and spiritual master, push on this work with full force. We have got a great mission to fulfill. And these books and magazines are the torch bearers of truth, which can save the world. 1972, letter to Krishna Bhamini. If we introduce these books in all the bookstores, schools, colleges, libraries, and everyone's home, our religion will be the only religion in the world very soon. 
This prediction has been made publicly here in one newspaper by a Japanese philosopher that within 10 years, Krishna consciousness will be the world religion. If you all keep preaching in such a pure way, this will undoubtedly prove true. 1972, letter to Mandali Bhadra. My first concern is that my books shall be published and distributed profusely all over the world. Practically, books are the basis of our movement. Without our books, our preaching will have no effect. 1972, letter to Bhagavan. I am especially in cheerful mood to hear that our books and literatures are being now widely increased but I don't think you will be able to approach near to the large amount of books being distributed by our California centers, especially in San Francisco. But if you can, then I shall certainly come there in Detroit and live there and translate there. I want to go and stay wherever they are selling the most books, but I do not think that anyone will become better than San Francisco. 1972. Letter to Bhaktadas. I'm very pleased to hear from you that book sales are increasing very fast. I am hearing such good news from all over the society, and this pleases me more than anything. 1972, letter to Keshava. By distributing my books profusely, you are giving me great encouragement to translate, and you are all helping me to fulfill the order which Guru Maharaj gave me. So I'm so much grateful to you, and I'm sure Krishna will bless you a million times over for doing this work. 1972, letter to Bali Mardan. I am convinced that if you simply glorify Krishna and our books in the best descriptive manner, then anyone and everyone, no matter even atheist or otherwise, they can be convinced to purchase. Of course, that is a great art and not everyone can do it. But gradually by practice of preaching in this way, striving to so much present a wonderful picture of our books to the people, gradually you will master the trick how to do it. 1972, letter to Dharma. Krishna does not care for how much we give to him, but he sees how much we are keeping back for ourselves. There is a story of Kolavechar Sridhar, a devotee of Lord Chaitanya, who, although he was a very poor man, gave half of his meager income for worshiping Mother Ganges, and by so doing, he greatly pleased the Lord. It is not so much important the quantity of books that we distribute, but that we serve Krishna as best we can and depend on him for the results. Transcendental competition is nice, but it should not come to the point of making us lose our Krishna consciousness. When you have these feelings, do not mistake it for enviousness, but take it to be an indirect appreciation of the service done by your other God brothers. This is... Okay, so we will end up with one small uh, analogy that, uh, not small analogy, uh, one small realization that has been given by uh, given by um, His Holiness Radha Goin Swami Maharaj. I just want to tell that I like it. Uh, I heard it from his space, Narendra Prabhu. And uh, he said that uh, English language is like a free flowing water in the village. Like a free flowing river, what it does, the village people can take birth. They can bring their animals to drink the water. They can wash their clothes. They can, you know, they can take the drinking water. So they can. Do, so one free flowing water can serve so many things, right? Similarly, English. You see, in today's world, most of the people in uh, they read English. They understand English. They do the poetry, drama, everything in English, right? Therefore, uh, um, uh, he compared English uh, with a free flowing river. And what Srila Prabhupada did, the Charnamrita, which is nothing but the nectar of Srimad Bhagavatam, he mixed the Charnamrita with this free flowing river so that it is available to all over the world. It is flowing and it is available to all over the world. All over the world can take this advantage of learning this most absolute knowledge. That is the glories of our dear most spiritual 
on the Raja Guru Shila Prabhupada. Shila Prabhupada ki! Jai! All glories to Shila Prabhupada, all glories to us and the devotee. Panchakal Patalu Vashtaka Prasindu Bhai Vachapati Tanan Pakali Bhavishna Vipuna Mura. Ananta Gari Vishnu Vindu Vijaya Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Anybody has any reflection? Comment? I don't know, I'm not qualified to die, you know, answer the question, but yeah, you can share your comment or reflection, please. I, I have this. Uh, I want to know, like, why Bhagavad Gita is considered as a holy book versus the Srimad Bhagavad Actually, that is lack of awareness, I will say. Bhagavad Gita is uh, mostly accepted and mostly known. Uh, um, uh, Bhagavad Gita, and you know the difference. Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says five things. Who am I? Who is God? What is our relation? What is our activities? Karma, karma, bi karma, and then talks about the time. So these five things has been explained. This is like a seven hundred bar small books, and mostly people, uh, mostly all the sampradaya, even if the Sankaracharya sampradaya, you know, everybody accepts it because it's a philosophy. But Krishna, but uh, in the Bhagavatam, Krishna has been presented as a personal form. His personal activities, pastime, his likes, and not his pastime interaction with the devotee. Many of our uh, uh, sampradaya in India, uh, uh, they do not accept the personal form. If you go to Bhagavad Gita chapter 12, you will see that Arjuna asked first question, was it easy to uh, uh, worship you in a personal form or in personal form? Then Krishna says, although both are true, but it's just like energy and energy. Both are true, but uh, it is easier to serve Krishna in the personal form. So, Srimad Bhagavatam, this knowledge is uh, little, um, first of all, it is written uh, by Vaisdev at the maturity stage, at the last, and then it's little volumes, and some of the sampradaya do not accept the personal form, therefore it is not well accepted. But in our culture, we actually uh, worship uh, Krishna in a personal form. Just like take an example, this uh, room, does it have a water? Yes, it has the water in the form of water vapor. Can you quench your thrust from that water vapor? No. You need to go to a liquid water. You need a liquid water. So even if Krishna is present in the, uh, the everywhere, like Prahlad Maharaj used to see, Krishna is present everywhere, right? But we cannot. We need to serve Krishna in this personal deity form. That's our philosophy. And that is actually given at the maturity stage of Bhag uh, Vasudev, compiling all the Vedic knowledge. So it is, uh, so both are holy book, uh, in, uh, in, because both are uh, coming from the Krishna and about Krishna and Krishna devotees. It's only thing it's not uh, well known. And that should be our driving factor to tell the people about the glories of Sri Right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you want to add something to No, no. Thank you, Proji. Uh, I was just hearing recently uh, in uh, one of the talk that uh, uh, just hearing recently in one of the talk that uh, Amogli Glabro was saying that uh, you know 5,000 years of Kali Yuga close to 5,000 years are already over and next 5,000 is like the total 10,000 and Prabhupada also says that this is like a golden age wherein people will actually uh, follow Bhakti. They will have some sentiments towards God. And then after 10,000 years, it is said, you know, in, in Bhagavatam also predicts this uh, on, in the 12th canto, you know, you can read it. Uh, what would be the symptoms of Kali Yuga? So eventually there will be acid rain and all the vegetations and everything will be lost. And every person living, will, they will become cannibals. So like, I eat you, you eat me. Because there is no vegetation. There is no food to eat. So the only thing you can eat is each other. So the killing will happen, massacre will happen. So just thinking about it brings like shivers into, into our bodies. That what, what is going to happen. And if you see the eternity, uh, the period of eternity, 5,000 years is not even a grain of sand in front of that. So considering the present situation, what we are in, and Prabhuji very nicely explained it, uh, it, is, it is the greatest blessing. You know, the, 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 the example of the astrologer telling, you know, this is the greatest wealth that you have, and then they, they're going and stealing those books. Mm -hmm. This is 
we when we just you know just contemplate maybe think about it for five minutes and you know why you are here uh, what is it that you know you have what is it that you have been given a chance to have this knowledge what was your uh, good fortune or maybe whatever you can say but we will feel so much saved krishna says in bhagavad gita you know for one who even starts bhakti he may not be able to complete it in in this lifetime because of any reason maybe he meets with an unwanted death maybe he leaves it because of some material uh, attractions that he has in his life but even if little bit one has started he is saved from the greatest danger of taking birth in the animal kingdom i assure that you know next life he will start from where he has stopped so he will get a human form of life most probably he'll get a birth in a devotee family or in a wealthy family wherein he can very nicely practice the devotional service so all this instruction which is given in bhagavad gita shrimad bhagavatam it builds our faith and we feel so fortunate that we have got this opportunity to know this message to to understand this knowledge and practice it in the association of the devotees so when we see examples like subhankar krishna prabhu who is living by not only you know he is practicing but living and teaching by his example um, you know every week he goes out distributes book there is pavan prabhu who is not here but he is very enthusiastic book distributor uh, they we, we have an idea to follow we have an example who is uh, currently uh, living by the teachings of shri prabhupada and doing extensive dis- book distribution just to help people and this is the knowledge that can actually save as prabhu ji mentioned Uh, no matter how many conferences and uh, world uh, you know peace organizations we set up uh, there will not be peace if we try to solve it on the same platform we have to look from a spiritual perspective and uh, proji gave this example of ukraine war there's so many wonderful stories and this is not something you know which is only within iskon even in media if you go in the news channel they had uh, displayed these instances of devotees coming out and distributing food this bombing happening at the next door and these devotees are preparing prasadam and whatever stock they had now usually in such a crisis situation what everyone would do is they would pack their bags they would uh, try to retain whatever uh, grains and property and whatever they have whatever money they have but here are devotees and these are not like indians these are all western devotees they are coming out and they are freely distributing prasadam they are helping each other they are helping others who are not even uh, like they have they have no relation and they may not be devotees also like even even if a russian army person comes he would probably be fed prasadam in this context so that is the mood you know we see what is happening and this is like completely 360 degree opposite and this is only possible because you know uh, of the mercy of shila propal who has taken this pain and effort and all his disciples and wonderful devotees we have taken this effort to distribute knowledge and to give it to others so the best thing you know what we do at our stage is we read it uh, many of the devotees have watched shrimad bhagavatam uh, so continuously read it if you read it as roji mentioned you know the fear within our heart that is disseminated and the bhakti eventually starts growing up and then we ourselves are convinced that yeah we we want to distribute to others if people come to us with some problem we we show them that why don't you follow this this has benefited me and the best preaching is by example like, like today's generation if i see like 50 years uh, or uh, you know before how india was and how it is right now uh, it is drastic change like 90% more than 90% of the population was vegetarian now it is completely opposite more than 90% is non vegetarian if you say that i am vegetarian they will first ask okay egg is okay right you can yeah. eat egg yeah. <laughs> so that is the conception that has that has started to become and it is changing in a very very drastic way and if we have to protect this if we have to really think about welfare this is the best welfare that can be done obviously opening hospital doing social service giving food that is one aspect and that is as per proji mentioned you know giving some biscuits and water to a girl who has lost her father but taking back to the father is something which we do by by teaching them and making them aware that there is a reality beyond this which you have to uh, accept and then once you do that you will understand you will get the benefits out of it and krishna says you know once you start it he will never come back here 
So we don't want to be part of this material world after 5,000 years, wherein there would be such a bad situation. So let us take it very seriously. Uh, this is one of the golden opportunities that we have got in our life. We should practice. You know, Prabhupada would say, just give one lifetime. We don't even have to give the entire lifetime. Like we have so many things to do. But make sure that you make this also as part of your life and practice it sincerely. Whatever little bit we are able to do. Maybe you're chanting two rounds, maybe you're chanting 20 rounds, but chant it with full uh, uh, enthusiasm and, and, and that feeling of gratitude that this is not different than Krishna. Maybe we are just able to read 15 minutes a day, but reading it with that uh, understanding that this is not different than the body of Krishna, what I'm reading. Uh, let me try to learn and contemplate what I can in, imbibe in my, my life by reading this. So by this, we will be able to, uh, you know, uh, uh, take the full advantage, the maximum advantage of this knowledge. And as, as Roji mentioned, you can always help and assist Prabhuji. He's doing wonderful book distribution, inspiring others and cultivating others by this knowledge. So uh, we can all follow his footsteps and assist him in whatever little way we can. So thank you very much, Prabhuji. It was a wonderful lecture and I, I, it, it was so enlightening. So we, we want to hear more and more from you, definitely. So thank you again. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Shri 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 Vanka Krishna Prabhu Ki Jai. Shri 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 Prabhu and all the assembled devotees. Ki Jai. Thank you very much. All glory to Shri Shri And uh, last thing, last but not the least, actually, ISKCON, just for your knowledge, ISKCON this year uh, distributing 43,000 Srimad Bhagavatam all over the world, globally. And then all the temples have taken part. Uh, Iskon Calgary also have taken part and they also distributed 26 Ramad Bhagavatam. Thank you very much. We uh, we hope that we could please with our endeavor to Shri Prabhupada. And thank you very much to all the Iskon Calgary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.